Hey guys, Victoria here with Take the Lead. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, some dog psychology stuff. I know I post a lot of videos of um, like training and what I'm doing with the dogs and like this is Ruby working on a downstay and we're working on heel and working on focus and I do talk a lot about that um, and I really appreciate everybody that watches those videos uh, but I think I'd like to take a minute to just kind of talk dog behavior um, that's not necessarily training but a really big part of um, living and working with dogs um, a lot of times people struggle with the behaviors that they're getting out of their dogs typically you know those bad behaviors whether it's pulling barking jumping destruction anxiety aggression that kind of stuff and it's really hard for folks to to deal with it they're not sure where to start they're looking for information and they're getting a lot of different pieces of advice from all sorts of people you know um, I spoke with a lady this morning and she's been reading a lot of stuff online she doesn't live live near me so we were trying to help get a plan together for her where she does live and it's just there's so much conflicting information out there there's stuff all over the place you read one thing and it says don't do this you read another thing and it says do this but if you do that you're gonna mess up your dog and and there's just so much information it's really overwhelming especially if you're trying a lot of stuff and you just are not seeing results um, so I just wanted to take some time to kind of talk about that. It's hard to be encouraged or feel empowered when you're trying things and it's not working. It really is. Um, the biggest thing when you're working really with your dog and their behavioral issues, um, you've got to keep trying stuff until you find something that does work. Um, part of your dog's behavior is certainly your dog's issue, but a lot of it is the what the human brings to the table. Um, if your dog is having behavioral issues and you're not actively trying to do something about it, you're missing out on a very key component of the program. Um, so if you're, you know, doing treat training and clicker training, but it's not working, what are you actively doing to try and find something that works? And let's say you're using prong collars and e collars, but you don't feel like it's working. What are you actively doing and actively learning so that you can bring it to the table and try something else with your dog. Um, there is so much information out there and there are so many different ways to train a dog. You know, I have my bit of stuff that works great for me, but there's other trainers all over the place that have things that work for them. Um, I, I'm part of a network of trainers who try and put a lot of information out there for people to, to see and learn from and hopefully be able to apply at home. Um, so that when I do talk to somebody who doesn't live nearby, maybe they don't have to take their dog back to the shelter because they can go grab a pet prong collar at PetSmart, put it on, and teach their dog the place command. You know, it's it's hard, it's really hard for people um, that are struggling with, with dogs that are doing dangerous behavior, you know, obnoxious stuff. You know, this dog, I think, pulled a lot and just out of control has been just running rampant all over their house since they adopted it like two months ago and last night it like snapped its leash and ran across the street and was just like slamming itself up against the window at the, the neighbor's house with their dogs just acting you know acting out and it's a young dog but its energy is out of control and it's just making a lot of bad choices um, and they're trying all sorts of stuff and it's not working and it's, it's really frustrating I know it is um, so you know look online and look for things and look for stuff that's like right there in front of your face like the I see the transition you know these these how-to videos that I put out and other trainers put out you know where you see the progression of like this is what was going on before this is what they're doing while they're working the dog and then this is the result in the end you know you'd be surprised how much one little thing can change the whole dynamic with your dog um, and when you're dealing with those kind of out of control behaviors you know you've really got to put in the the effort to change your behaviors with your dog um lo love is not the issue love is always in the equation when you adopt a dog i mean nobody nobody goes to adopt a dog that doesn't love dogs you know um love is not absent love is clearly there affection is clearly there the minute you pick that dog up so we don't have to worry about making sure that that's there it is there trust me what's lacking in most of these dogs are boundaries are respect you know respecting boundaries understanding boundaries and having a human who can represent leadership and help them make better choices you know we I'm going to talk about rescue dogs for a minute only because they have there's always a story with a rescue dog and that for you know 
a general, you know, a, per, a nice person, the story really pulls at your heartstrings and it can affect a lot of what you do with your dog. It probably affects how much affection and love you give your dog all the time and maybe the lack of boundaries and discipline that you give. And it's not necessarily an intentional thing that people are trying to do. Like, I mean, that these are my clients, you know, I've got, I've actually got like two special needs rescue dogs. And so <laughs> they're even <laughs> more, you know, pulling at the heartstrings and drawing your attention because they're like, they're disabled. They're both blind, but they fight with each other. You know, I've got another rescue dog who kept getting bounced from home to home. And now he's in like probably his third or fourth home and they're getting training. Good. You know, these owners, I'm not picking on my owners because my, my clients are getting help. They're, they're, they realize there's an issue and they're addressing it. But you know, when you have a dog that you hear has been bounced from home to home, you, you feel sorry for it. You feel like, oh my gosh, you know, his life is so hard because no one has loved him. Everyone's given up on him. And so we kind of shower him with affection instead of with the rules and guidance that they need. You know, our little blind guys, we are fighting, like I said, we're fighting with each other. And this, this other guy, he fights with the dogs in the house and he's destroying the house. Um, it's, it's a matter of the love being there, but too much love and, and affection and not enough rules and guidance. You know, these guys, these dogs are desperate for some guidance. They're desperate for somebody to, to help them be successful. And what happens is we, we don't know what to do. It's not an intentional thing by, the, by anyone. It's just the information doesn't seem to be out there that says like, hey, you need to set some boundaries for your dog. You can tell your dog no. If your dog's doing this, we need to interrupt it. You know, certain body language things people don't know about. I mean, that's how I got into dog training. My dogs were fighting and I had a dog. I adopted another dog, fights within a week of owning the second dog. And I had no idea about anything. You know, I'd come home, get them all excited. I'm home, dog fight. You know, like, here's your bones, guys. I'd get everybody a bone, dog fight. You know, I had one fluffy dog bed because I wanted them to cuddle, dog fight. I mean, it was things that I, I didn't think about, but you know, I just thought my dog should be friends. There are, there are so many little things when it comes to dogs that we're not aware of. And it's really important, you know, for information to be out there that says like, Hey, when your dog is super excited, he's bound to make really bad choices. So that dog that's like <sighs> losing their mind crazy when you come in the front door, that's not how you want to greet your dog. And you don't want to get your dog that wild. When we get our dogs that amped up and they run into each other, they have a fight, you know, or they jump on somebody or they, they get frustrated and they bite, you know, it's dogs being that excited and that like out of their mind is not a happy dog. That's a dog who doesn't know how to function, doesn't know how to stay like cool, calm and collected. That's a happy dog. That's a comfortable dog, you know, and we kind of like our dogs wild, wild child. And, you know, if you think about it, like the dogs, the animal shelter, what do they do? They're beating up against crates. Like what, 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 we, what do we trainers talk about? Hey, our dog needs to be calm and relaxed before we let it out of the crate. Ignore it when it's in the crate. The crate is the calm place. At the animal shelter, people approaching the cage is super exciting. So all these dogs that are coming from shelters and rescues are used to having people come up to the cage and stick their fingers in and get the dog excited. And so the dog is conditioned. We, we have the pup as the public have conditioned these dogs to act like lunatics when people approach the crate. So it's really hard to get that dog into a home. And then all of a sudden be like, you need to be calm because for a long time, the only interaction it had with anybody was through the bars and everybody sticking their fingers in and getting them excited. Again, we love dogs, so we like to go to the pet store and knock on the window and stick our fingers in at the animal shelter and get them all excited because we love them, but it's not helping. It's not really helping them. Um, and those are things, you know, that's not really thought, um, thought through or even brought to people's attention that we're keep creating dogs that are living in a constant state of arousal and dogs that can't be calm. The majority of the behavioral problems that arise, whether it's anxiety, aggression, you know, um, uh, hyperactivity, all of it comes from not being calm. All of it comes from a state of arousal, of reactivity, of lack of impulse control, because unintentionally we are just creating these dogs who are living constantly like losing their mind. I, I call it uh, a sense of being tickled until you can't breathe. Like when we come home and we talk to our dogs and we talk to our little dogs and we get them so excited that they're going <laughs> and they can't breathe, you know, and like our big dogs are like, you know, losing their mind and blooding their tails on the wall and just spinning circles and just like breathing really hard. Like that would be if every time, you know, your sister came home or your husband came home or your child came home, 
the first thing you did when you saw them is just tickled them to the point that they couldn't breathe. Like that is the interaction that we do every day with her dogs and lead to, to having dogs who are constantly aroused. And that's the problem. A dog who's constantly that amped up is bound to make really bad choices because they never learn how to turn it off. Every interaction with us is like, oh my God, hey baby. Like it's really hard for us to interact calmly with our dogs. And this isn't just rescue dogs because I have a dog at the house who they got as a puppy and he grew up and there were no signs of, there were no abuse or neglect and he is extremely aggressive. So it's, you know, dogs are creatures of their environment and if we are missing guidance and we're missing structure and we're missing boundaries and we're sending mixed messages and encouraging behaviors we don't want unintentionally we can create and we can have problems and genetically yes there are some genetically more anxious dogs there are some genetically more fearful and even genetically more aggressive dogs certainly but your typical everyday dog out of the shelter you know kind of dog is not naturally aggressive or naturally anxious but if they were calm and chill wouldn't be making bad choices but we keep encouraging our dogs to just lose their mind so that's why a lot of what um, I work with training is training calm behaviors and just teaching our dogs how to turn it off and yes of course they can get excited and you can go out and throw the ball and you can get them amped up but do you know how to get your dog to come down from it before you get them all amped up do you know how to get them calm you know it's the difference between taking your dog to play piano and taking your dog to like Chuck E. Cheese you know or <laughs> your dog I'm sorry teaching your kid how to play piano and taking your kid to Chuck E. Cheese. They're both activities that you can do with your child, but one is productive and one is just, you know, energy burn and that's it. Piano lessons are a lot of thinking, a lot of stress on their, you know, their mind, but it's beneficial. Chuck E. Cheese, burn some steam, they're gonna be exhausted, but they're constantly in a state of arousal. So you have to look at the differences and see, you know, piano lessons create a a better developed child, music, musically intellectual, you know, stuff like that. Chuck E. Cheese is just go have fun with your friends, you know. So there are times to do that, but there are a lot of times we need to be learning. And that's something that I'm afraid is missed a lot. And only because we think so much about making our dogs happy. And to the eye, that dog that is like losing their mind and wagging their tail and can't breathe. And just is when we look at that, we say that's happy. That's super, super aroused. A happy dog is comfortable and walks around casually and you know, wags their tail, but it's not that losing their mind kind of reaction. That's not a happy dog. That's a dog who's like hyperventilating with overexcitement. It's very different from being happy. Happy, like, and I think I've said this before, happy dogs don't bite people. Happy dogs don't growl at people. Happy dogs don't, you know, run away from you you know what i mean happy happy dogs aren't ruining families and 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 destroying homes and destroying your property and and running the show you know happy dogs are chill relaxed and comfortable why would a happy dog bite somebody and it's it's something you have to keep in mind you know what what are we doing to make our dogs happy what are we doing to make us happy and realize that sometimes those things don't always equal up and what we want for our dog to be isn't always what they are we have to do what's best for our dog we have to realize you know we have to change some things ourselves and actively work on ourselves so we can improve what we've got going on at home so um, if you have questions like post them in the comments I would love to hear from you um, this just just something that's been going I've been trying to process and, and come up with and I hope I put everything I wanted to in this video but um, the big thing is we've just gotta, we've gotta live well with our dogs, but we have to realize that there are things we have to change about ourselves. And there are a lot of things and a lot of just perceptions about dogs that we have to, to realize are not, not always the same. Happiness is not always that super wiggly losing their mind dog because those dogs get in fights and those dogs jump on people and those dogs nip people and those dogs, you know, sc scratch you and run away and, they're not making good choices. A happy dog knows how to make good choices. An uncomfortable and stressed out dog doesn't. So just wanted to keep, keep that in mind. Um, I really enjoy you guys. I appreciate you following my page. And um, you know, I love my clients and I appreciate everything that they're doing to work with their dogs and anybody who is actively trying to improve what they've got going on with their dog. I'm really proud of you because it's really hard and there's a lot of information out there, but you're doing it. So I think it's amazing. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye.